Hi, I am Dr. Archil Panth and today I am going to tell you about fungal acne. How does fungal acne look? Why do you get fungal acne and how you can treat it? So let's get started. So what is fungal acne? Fungal acne is caused by a yeast called Malsizia furfur. This yeast is normally present on the skin in all healthy individuals, usually seen on the back and the shoulder area, but it can be present anywhere on the skin. So under certain circumstances, it can then enter into the hair follicle and cause infection. So why do you get fungal acne? If you're on steroids, steroids can reduce the immunity of your body and reduce the ability of the body to fight infections. This can lead to overgrowth of this yeast and can cause fungal acne. So if you're taking steroids for a long time, you could develop fungal acne. Second reason is if you're on immunosuppressants. Immunosuppressants are these drugs that are given to reduce the ability of your skin to form certain cells against your own body. Okay, So it's given in autoimmune conditions wherein we don't want your uh, body cells to be harmed. Okay, So this is when you are on certain immunosuppressants. So this can also lead to the decreased ability of your skin to fight infections that can lead to uh, overgrowth of this fungus leading to fungal acne. So if you're on antibiotics for a long time, then that can reduce the amount of bacteria on your skin. This leads to overgrowth of the fungus in that area. Okay, So there is a delicate balance of microflora on our skin. We do need this bacteria to be present on the skin in order to protect the skin so that other organisms do not grow. So when you're taking antibiotics for a long time, these bacteria die, leaving that area behind where this fungus inhabits okay and this can lead to fungal acne fungal acne is also more commonly seen in people who have dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis seborrheic dermatitis is a condition in which your skin makes a different type of oil which is very uh, conducive for growth of these organisms like fungus and yeast this occurs as redness and flaking around the nose area even in the beard area on the eyelids on the eyelashes and of course on the scalp so it can present as dandruff or flaking in the areas also fungal acne is more commonly seen in hot humid climate hot humid climate where you sweat a lot that tends to kind of change the microflora of the skin and makes the skin more conducive for uh, inhabitation by fungi so this can also lead to fungal acne so how does fungal acne look like it is not very easy for a lay person to differentiate between acne vulgaris and fungal acne. So if you are suspecting fungal acne, I really strongly recommend that you visit a dermatologist and get the diagnosis. Otherwise, you cannot just treat it on your own. Fungal acne appears as these monomorphic lesions, meaning that all the lesions look the same. These are small, tiny red bumps that are seen in this area. So the center of the forehead, uh, around the nose and around the mouth. This is where you usually see fungal acne along with the upper back. Okay, and sometimes in the chest as well. So this is the area where you commonly see fungal acne. This is also the area where you commonly see acne. Okay, but how do you differentiate is that usually in acne, you see where lesions of various types. You know, they can be nodules, papules, pustules, cyst. Also, there are wh whiteheads and blackheads. The absence of whitehead and blackheads with appearance of just similar looking lesions points towards the diagnosis of fungal acne. Because in fungal acne, you do not see any blackheads and whiteheads. Sometimes they can occur together. So let's say you have a lot of acne and you are taking medications for that and then you can develop a flare of this fungal acne. Even that can occur. Okay, so please visit a dermatologist and get a diagnosis before you want to treat your fungal acne. It is very important to differentiate between acne vulgaris and fungal acne because the treatment is different. Also, you know, if you are on certain antibiotics for acne vulgaris and you've developed a flare of fungal acne, then we need to stop the antibiotics and put you on on some other medications. So this differentiation between acne vulgaris and fungal acne is very important. So how can you treat fungal acne? First and foremost, you do not self-treat. It is not an easy diagnosis to make, definitely not by a layperson. Okay, so please do visit a dermatologist and get a correct diagnosis. So there are certain things that you can do if the diagnosis of fungal acne has been made. First, you avoid using oils. You do not apply any hair oil that can lead to more overgrowth of this fungus. Okay, so you avoid using hair oil. You will shampoo your hair every two to three days. That is very important to reduce 
reduce the amount of oil secretion from the scalp and also the oil tends to trickle down on the size of the face and lead to this eruptions on the face as well. So you want to stay away from application of oil. Try to wear only cotton clothing, especially if you have these bumps on the chest and the back. You want to stay away from any kind of synthetic clothing or nylon or any synthetic fabric that will lead to accumulation of sweat in this area for a long time. More the sweat, longer the sweat remains on the skin, higher the chances of the fungus overgrowing in this area. Okay, so you want to wear pure cotton clothing and make sure that the there is no sweat logging in this area. Always make sure that you take a bath immediately after working out. If you're doing any kind of cardio exercises or you're out in the sun and you are sweating and you come back home, immediately change your clothes into fresh dry clothes. This is very important. Don't let your sweat dry on your skin because longer the sweat sits on the skin, higher the chances of fungal infection. Okay, so you want to take these precautions in order to reduce the record of this infection. Also make sure that all the clothes that you're wearing are properly ironed, especially your shirt and all the undergarments that you're using also need to be ironed so that the chances of this fungal recurrence is less. Make sure that your towels are also ironed. Okay, so whenever you use a towel, it has to be dried properly but also ironed in order to reduce the chances of this fungal infection. So in the clinic, we usually give oral antifungals such as fluconazole, itoconazole or ketoconazole depending upon the type of infection you have. So you might need an oral antifungal course uh, in order to improve your fungal acne. Other than that, we also put you on certain medications such as salicylic acid. Salicylic acid can help in reducing the amount of oil formation and also reduce the fungal acne. We also like to prescribe sulfur lotion, especially if you have fungal acne over the back and chest, using a sulfur lotion at night can really help in reducing the uh, amount of fungal acne. So the commonly prescribed antifungal medications are ketoconazole shampoos or lotion or zinc pyrethion, pyroctone olamine, cyclopyrox. These are usually applied on the skin for about 15 to 20 minutes and then washed off. There are also cream formulations or lotion formulations of ketoconazole available that can be applied and left overnight. We usually like to give creams that contain miconazole on the face. So the choice of antifungal depend upon where you have the fungal acne and the severity of fungal acne. So that will decide which uh, lotion or cream we prescribe and for how long you need to use it. So make sure that if you're suspecting fungal acne, you visit a dermatologist and get a correct diagnosis and do not self-treat because this can make things worse. Also remember that fungal acne and acne vulgaris can occur together. So maybe you will treat the fungal acne first and then you can treat the acne vulgaris later. So we usually suspect fungal acne in cases of acne vulgaris who are not responding. Okay, so sometimes we are treating acne for about two to three months, but we do not see improvement or there is intermittent flare of acne with you know these kind of lesions where there are no whiteheads blackheads but multiple red bumps then we suspect fungal acne so it has to be a diagnosis made by a dermatologist and then only beyond treatment so please do not use these lotions without knowing the diagnosis of the lesions okay this is just a general guide so if you have been diagnosed you can manage it I hope you found this video useful. If you like such skin and hair related content, you can follow me on my Instagram handle Dr. Achil MD. I post skin and hair related content daily. Thank you for watching.